Right, so we're here today, it's getting warm, the weather's warming up, the water's warming up, and we're here today to sort of show you the transition period from winter to spring and how we change our approach to catch these fish. Now, this time of year, you sort of, your hard pellets start working. So concentrating on hard pellets for carp is obviously a deadly sort of tactic. Now, sort of previously in the winter, you'd be tapping your micros in, your maggots, things like that. But this time of year, they sort of, sort of stop working as such because you get your silverfish uh, feeding and things like that. And to catch a big weight of carp, you, need, you sort of need to change your approach. So by fishing hard pellets and things like that, you're going to catch them sort of 200 to 200 pound weights which are going to win your matches. One of the best ways to do this is by fishing it on the pole. So fishing it like 13 to 40 metres out, somewhere nice and comfortable to feed your pellets. And also like a short line, sort of six metres out throwing pellets. So what we'll do is now we'll sort of explain a bit more about what we're doing today. So when it comes to choosing pellets, there's a lot of sizes on the market. Now, coming into this time of year, for carp especially, I think six mils is the best sort of size to stick with. Now, the reason I like six mils is because they're a good all-round size. You can catch any sort of size carp on them and you can sort of play around with how you feed to make them work. The reason they're so good is you can play around with obviously making noise because when you throw some in or catapult some in, they make a really good noise. So the reason they are good is because you can feed minimal bait and get the best sort of return out of them. So obviously you can imagine if you threw five pellets in the water, you've got the optimum attraction, you've got five pellets there, your hook bait's there, you've got a brilliant chance of catching it. Now you could use four mils and I probably would for sort of F1s and smaller, very smaller carp, but the trouble is with using four mils at this type of venue, when it's out and out carp, you can track nuisance fish in your pegs, sort of like skimmers and roach and you don't want to be catching them. Now, you could look into 8 mils as an option, but to be fair, I don't really tend to like using them because you have to sort of feed minimal bait with them because if you feed too much, it's just, it seems to blow your peg up, I find personally. Now, there is situations where it'll work when you've got lots of little skimmers and 6 mils don't work, but as a general rule of thumb, I'd choose the 6 mil dynamite catty pellets, which are absolutely perfect for this time of year. Now when it comes to feeding hard pellets, there's many ways you can do it. You can throw them, catapult them, or even catapult them in. Now, the ba the basically the way I like to do it is do a bit of both. So I like to start off cupping them and try and catch the fish like one at a time. Now the, the reason this is so good is because you're not making too much noise and you can almost sort of sneak them in and control your peg. But then it also brings them to the other ends with the, where you're using the catapult. So by catapulting them in, you can attract fish into your peg and then once they're there you can use a pot to set them again and the same goes with throwing so you can throw them and pot them in now the reason this is so good is because you can either like make something happen if it's not like if you're not catching but then if you've got too many fish in your peg you can calm it down and sneak them in the pot because pellets make a lot of noise this is where they're so good especially this time of year them fish really respond to noises so that's why it's so effective really, because you can control your peg and you can always try and make something happen. There's always an option. If things are not quite going to plan or you want to try and catch a bit quicker, for example, then I'll obviously pick up the catapult. The way I like to use a catapult is ideally I like to try and catch a fish, hook a fish, and then try and catapult a few pellets over the top to bring the next fish in while I'm playing it. But them days where sometimes just kinder a pot and then the pellets in doesn't work, then you do really need to um, make something happen so like I say using the catapult well, I just ping in two or three in to start with 
lifting and dropping, working the rig, and some days that's unbeatable, but this is just where experience comes in and you've got to play around with it. Then some days, like double pouching five or six and sitting there, can really do the business as well. So it's one of them, I always think with pellets, start off light with a cad pot and just sort of fill your way in. And then if it's not happening, just play around with catapulting them in and changing it up. See, I've mentioned about potting pellets in. This is how I generally like to start me, me session. Now, the reason this is so good is because you can have a little tight pile of bait on the bottom and it makes the fish so much easier to catch. Now, there is situations, like I say, where it doesn't work, but you can actually com combine the two as well. So if they do want a bit of noise, you can obviously feed and then you can use the pot to sort of concentrate in the little area. And then, like I say, sometimes the pot is not the one, but ideally I think in my, in my mind, the pot is the one because you can concentrate the fish in a tighter area and it makes you get bites quicker. Now, in terms of feeding, I always try to start off negative if I can, because I think it makes the fish easier to catch. Now, to start the session, I literally feed six to eight, six mils. It doesn't sound a lot of bait, but when you can get away with feeding this much, you just catch them so much easier. And the reason it's, I feed so little is because a lot of these pegs on commercial fisheries, the fish are already there. So when you start in there, just by fishing sort of negative, you can just also read what's in your peg. If it's going to be a hard day, you don't want to be going putting 50 pellets in and you can just blow your peg up. So by starting negative and working your way up, so say if you're feeding six to eight and it's not working, up it to 10 to 12 and vice versa, just play around with it. And uh, if you're getting, say, silverfish, try feeding 15, 20 pellets, just play around with it. But the, also the good thing as well, with your pole pot is, you can actually alter where you sort of plop the pellets in. So you can either tap them just above the surface, which will make no noise, and that's brilliant if there's a lot of fish in your peg. But if it's not happening, try rattling them in from a height and make something happen. So in hard pellet fishing, I'm sure we've all experienced foul lookers. Now, some days there can be an absolute nightmare, but there's a certain few tricks you can sort of do to try and avoid this. Now, first of all, a lot of it is down to the feeding. So if you're getting a lot of foul lookers, try making as little noise as possible, because it can mean they're coming off the bottom and all sorts like that. So my best advice would be to put some pellets in a pot, again, play around with the numbers, but literally make hardly any noise and just tap some in and just sit there and wait patiently for a bite, even if it takes longer. Another thing it can cause foul lookers is when you're fishing on silt. So what can happen is you can go out and you can catch a few, nail a few straight away, and it can move good. And then all of a sudden you get bubbles and your float sits lower and foul lookers and stuff like that. And the best way to sort of get away from this is just plumb somewhere sort of to the left or the right of your swim and just start again and then try and keep your bait as minimal as possible because the more you feed the more foul hookers you're going to get and that's sort of the best way to describe of how to avoid it. Right so rig choice is very important for hard pellets. Now the float I've gone for is a 4 by 16 Cypri float. Now it's a nice nice float it's got a 1.7 mil bristle which is it works absolutely perfect for pellets because the 1.7 mil bristle will register on the pellet. So say if the carp have dug your peg out or it's not on the bottom, it will sit lower. Whereas when I'm, no one's fishing correctly, it will sit higher. So that's a big edge for me. Um, in terms of the elastic, today I've gone for the white zip elastic, nice and soft on the strike, lets the fish swim out your peg. But once you get it to the puller, it, you know, you can tighten up beautifully. In terms of main line, I've gone for 019 main line, something nice and strong and durable. There's no point messing about with carp fishing. Come into the shot and pattern, we've just got a simple bulk of number nines and two number nine droppers. So the bulk is 18 inches from the hook. Not, um, six inches below that, I've got another number nine. Six inches below that, I've got another number nine dropper. Hook link material, it's 017 and it's a six inch hook link and a size 16 SLWG hook. The reason I think this is the perfect rig is we're fishing in today probably five or six foot of water. Now as a guide, when I'm fishing anywhere between five and seven foot, I always try to stick with the four by 16. It's done me well in the past, it's served me well, and it always seems a nice float for the situations. If I was fishing in any sort of shallow, I'd say between three and five foot on a perfectly calm day, I'd probably opt for the four by 14. Exactly the same shot in pattern. It just works a bit better, obviously, being a lighter rig. 
And then say if I was fishing anything six foot plus or the wind's bad, I'd simply go for simply go again for the 4B18 Sippy version. Right, so when it comes to plumbing up with hard pellets, it's really important how you plumb it up. The way I like to plumb up is bottom of the body. I just think there's enough line on the bottom to sort of allow them fish to suck it in and you get a nice clean bite. Now, you hear a lot of people as well, they'll say, everyone's different, that's my personal way, but you get some people plumb up to bristle, but in my personal opinion, I don't think sometimes it gives enough line on the bottom. For, especially for big carp, I think you can get away with like, like laying a tiny bit more line on the bottom. I think you get better presentation as well. So if you've got a bit of a wind or anything, just that bit of line on the bottom just helps the presentation. The good thing with plumbing up like that, if them carp sort of dig your peg out, it just allows you to sort of, you've, you're going to be fishing if that makes sense. And then obviously if they dig the bottom out, your float's going to sit lower and then you know to re-plumb. So when it comes to deciding your lash between your pole tip and your float, it's a common theme that people think you need dead short lines between your pole tip and your float. Now this is all good when you're fishing short, but personally I think when you're fishing long, presentation is the optimum thing because basically that catches the fish. So by fishing with a slightly longer lash, I mean it could be anything up to two foot on a windy day and using back shot, this helps the presentation massively. There's not really a set length you can fish it. It's all about being comfortable for yourself and picking a place where you think the fish are going to be. Now, this could be literally anywhere from six metres right out to 18 metres if you want to hold it. But a lot of the thing is with um, long sort of long pole fishing with pellets is being able to feed comfortably. So if you can't catapult accurately, you're not going to catch so many fish. So for people that are new to it, I always suggest find a distance you can catapult your pellets nice and comfortable and group and nicely and stick to that distance as a starting guide. So when it comes to feeding your short line in the spring, in my eyes, there's no better bait than hard pellets. Now, the reason they're so good is because you can constantly make that noise through the day. So every time I ship out personally, I'll chuck some hard pellets short. And again, like I've spoken about, because you can feed little of bait with a lot of attraction of the noise, it makes the fish so easy to catch. So you literally might only get like half an hour maybe even, or it could be with two hours to go, they'll come on that line. And because you've literally got a nice dense bait there and you're feeding minimal, it makes them nice and easy to catch. And I've had some massive weights on hard pellets short. So I think it's, it's a line where it really works well. When it comes to short pole, I do actually change my rig very slightly. So instead of having the bulk and two droppers, I'll have a bulk and one dropper. So simply got bulk probably 12 inches away from the hook, six inches below that, one uh, number nine dropper. And then I've still got my six inch hook link exactly the same. But the reason I have it a bit lower is because the fish are coming to feed there. So I want to get it down a bit quicker and sort of get on with it because that's where you're looking to catch your big weights. So when it comes to elastic choice in that line as well, I'll sort of step it up. So whatever I'm using long, I'll use a bit heavier short because like that's when you're going to be bagging and catching them match winning weights. So today's been a classic early spring session. We've unsettled weather recently, obviously we've had a lot of cold spells, the fishing was tricky to start with. We've got temperatures, temperatures such as like 13 and 14 degrees now, so I think the fish are almost a bit confused. So obviously we started off just potting some pellets out there, we had a quite a slow start to be honest. But as the days progressed, you know, the fishing's got better, the, probably the water temperature's increased a bit and the fish are really coming on the feed. Now the best way to feed today was actually by just sneaking the pellets in, so literally putting 10 pellets in a pot, and just sit in patiently, wait till you get a bite, strike into one and actually just lose feed three or four pellets over the top, just to get that next fish there. We did try sort of playing about with sort of pinging a few pellets and stuff like that, but it just seemed, didn't seem right. They seemed to bring a few phallics into the swim and it just didn't, just unsettled the peg, it wasn't right. So I hope that's sort of drawn a few conclusions into hard pellet fishing and I hope you've enjoyed the video and follow some of these tips and you won't go wrong.